This will not be a normal comparison. That just wouldn't make sense because these phones are basically complete opposite extremes and one also costs way more than the other. But I think that's exactly what will make it interesting and may also help you find out which side you stand on. Everything or essentials. Hey, I'm Brian and this is Pixel 3a versus OnePlus 7 Pro. Pure VPN not only encrypts your traffic so you can browse more privately and securely, it also bypasses geoblocking so you can enjoy Netflix US or your country's sports coverage anywhere in the world. And the best thing is that you can try it risk-free for 31 days and get full access starting at only a couple of bucks a month. So check out Pure VPN at the link in the video description. If you haven't seen them yet, my reviews of these two phones might be a good watch. The boxes of both are already quite different, with the Pixel giving you an OTG adapter and headphones in addition to the USB-C cable and fast charger, which are the only things in the 7 Pro's box. This is despite the Pixel costing so much less, and note that neither includes a headphone dongle, which isn't an issue on the Pixel because that does have a headphone jack, but is on the OnePlus. And the stark contrasts continue with build quality and design. While the Pixel is made from plastic, the OnePlus 7 Pro is a premium metal and glass sandwich. Now don't get me wrong, the soft touch plastic of the 3A doesn't feel as cheap as a Pocophone, but it just doesn't scream quality like the OnePlus. On the plus side, that also means that the Pixel won't attract fingerprints or break as easily. It's also much smaller and lighter. The 7 Pro is a huge and heavy phone with an extremely large screen. But that display is just out of this world. The 7 Pro has a beautiful curved 6.7 inch AMOLED with no bezels or notch to speak of. And of course, because of that, you have the selfie camera on a pop-up mechanism. In comparison, the Pixel is rather boring with its large bezels. The display is only 1080p compared to 1440p on the 7 Pro and doesn't have quite the same punchy but still accurate colors. But it's also an OLED and for the price, that's already a feat. Both feature very good stereo speakers, by the way, with one firing out the bottom, which is less forgivable on the Pixel given its huge chin. Let's talk about performance, where another big difference arises. The 7 Pro comes with the highest end Snapdragon 855, paired with up to 12GB of RAM and 256GB of UFS 3 storage. Together with the 90Hz display, that leads to the fastest and smoothest experience on any smartphone. It's not something you can't live without anymore, but especially when switching between apps and scrolling through feeds, the 7 Pro is just a breeze. On the Pixel, on the other hand, you only get a mid-range Snapdragon 670, 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, which, just like on the 7 Pro, isn't expandable. But despite this combination, the 3A isn't a slow phone. There are no stutters or lag, but apps have to reload more often, which also takes longer, and high-performance gaming probably won't be its strong suit. Not blazing fast, but not taking away from the experience. The reason that both can manage their respective performance is, of course, the very similar approach to software. Both run basically stock Android, which I really enjoy, but for the Pixel that means bad gesture navigation and a non-remappable squeeze for the assistant. This is a cool addition though, just like the always-on song recognition that shows up on the always-on display. The 7 Pro only has an ambient display, but adds much more customization through Oxygen OS with better gestures and a dark mode. And instead of the squeeze, you have a handy alert slider. Battery life is an interesting point. Despite the battery on the OnePlus being much larger, because of that one's huge display, both get about the same 6 hours of screen on time with my usage, which is pretty good. Charging is a bit faster on the 7 Pro with warp charge, especially for a quick top up. The Pixel needs about 15 minutes more to get to 100%, but at least its charging tech isn't proprietary. Both phones don't feature wireless charging, just like neither is certified for water resistance. In both cases you get a premium haptic vibration motor though, as well as a fast fingerprint scanner which on the OnePlus can be found under the screen on the front, whereas it's on the back on the Pixel. Finishing up with the camera, which is really great on either and probably the part that interests you the most. The Pixel enters the race with a 12.2 megapixel single shooter, while the 7 Pro has a 48 megapixel main camera, as well as an 8 megapixel telephoto and 16 megapixel wide angle sensor. Despite this large spec difference, the pictures are very close and hard to discern a lot of the time. The pictures on the OnePlus are a bit more saturated, as well as warmer and brighter than on the Pixel, which makes food look a bit more tasty. The 3A produces shots that are much more natural though, and also have higher contrast. But you won't be disappointed with either, and you can't only count on each to never disappoint you, but rather surprise you with its capabilities. This is not true for the night mode on the OnePlus though, which compared to the one on the Pixel just doesn't stand a chance. The pictures from the two secondary cameras on the OnePlus are not quite as good, but it's really nice to have the flexibility which the Pixel lacks. 
Selfies are good on both, but the pixel has the edge, with looking more natural and supplying a better bokeh effect. Video, however, is where the 7 Pro shines, with 4K 60 compared to only 30 FPS on the pixel. And you also get various slow motion options that the pixel doesn't feature. In case you haven't noticed already, these phones are not for the same person. The OnePlus 7 Pro is the phone for the enthusiasts or for people who just want the most of everything. You get a one-of-a-kind 90Hz display and a phone that just looks like it's from the future. It has super fast charging, unrivaled performance and a camera that will not disappoint. But all of this also has its price. It's almost twice as expensive as the Pixel 3a. And that's a steep premium when the 3a already does so many things so well. This is the phone for everyone else, in my opinion the best option for most people and the way better value. It has a camera that is even better than the one of the 7 Pro in terms of raw picture quality, even if you do lose out on the extra perspectives. And the performance and screen are more than good enough for the day to day. I think this comparison showed very well what you can already get by spending 400 euros, but also what you gain by spending more. If you only use your phone for browsing the web, watching videos like this or taking amazing pictures, you don't need to spend more than on the Pixel 3a. But the 7 Pro does add a lot on top of this. The question is if you really need a phone like this. Probably not, but wanting to have one is another story. Maybe we should look at the OnePlus 7 Pro kind of like a sports car. Not a lot of people need one, but the ones who do have one will have a lot of fun with it. Phones are very different in the way that a lot of people have the highest end devices, even if that's completely unnecessary. Maybe we should start thinking of phones more like we do of other products. Just a thought. But no matter which side you stand on, I think you'll find the better device for you. If you enjoyed this video, you know which buttons to press and don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.